We've talked about Ohm's law, which is V equals IR, and that only works in a very simple circuit with one battery across one resistor and going back. But it's possible for us to have multiple resistors that we put together. And you can combine these resistors in two ways, one of which will give us the biggest resistance and one of which is just the smallest resistance. There are combinations thereof you can make, but that's the basic case. I'm going to show you these two extreme cases. With these three different resistors, I can connect them in, first of all, to make the biggest resistance. In order to make the flow the smallest, I want to force the flow through R1 and R2 and R3 in the sense that if there's more obstacles in the way, it is always going to be harder, no matter how small the obstacle is. And this is what we call in series. If you have to make something go through one thing and another thing, that's in series. In terms of schematic, it looks like this. You've got your path coming out of your battery, and you make it go through this one, then the other one, and this last one, like that. In the case of series, and everything is in one line, we can actually combine this into a single equivalent resistance. like that by simply adding them up. And that is the biggest possible resistance you can make. So that's how we get the largest R is to connect everything in a line in series so it goes through R1 and R2 and R3. To make the smallest R, instead of putting them on a line, we want to put them many different paths. The more paths you have, like if you imagine if you're walking through a hallway, if instead of forcing everyone to go through one path, you have a bunch of different paths, it's always going to be easier. No matter how tight the other new path is, it's always going to be at least a little bit easier. In that sense, we're setting it through R1, not N, but or R2 or R3. In terms of schematic, here's what it looks like. You have the current coming out of the battery. It can go through R1 and go back, but the road splits and you can make it go through R2, so that's or R2. Notice it doesn't go through both of them. Any current only has to go through one of these. And this splits again, so it can also have the choice to go through or R3. And the resistance is always easier because you have more paths. And this connection is what we call parallel. Because I guess the plus side is all touching and the negative side is all touching. In that sense, it's parallel. Again, we can reduce a parallel structure like this into a singular equivalent resistance so we can use our Ohm's law. Now the connection is different, so the math is different. We don't simply just add them up like in series. The math is a little trickier. As it works out, the equivalent resistance, or 1 over that, it's equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. So usually we have to do this in two steps. First find out what this is, when we add up all the reciprocal first. And because of fraction, you don't add up the denominator, you have to work out the division first. The unit stays underneath. Then my actual equivalent resistance is one over this because that, that was the reciprocal. And you end up getting 20.32 some odd ohms. Notice how this overall resistance is smaller than even the smallest of the original resistance. It's always going to be smaller. So there you go, series and parallel connection. 
and different ways of finding out what the equivalent resistance is so that we can ultimately use V equals IR by reducing everything down to one single resistor.